Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're gonna to be taking a look at a set of four model kits here from the Xeno Gears series. And these model kits are produced by Square Enix. In the past, you guys remember that I did a review of a set of front mission model kits from Square Enix. And I actually have another set to review for you guys here in the future and we'll get to those soon enough. Uh, but these are really cool model kits. They're not that large, but they're very detailed, not that color separated, uh, but they can be pretty expensive. And some of you guys may not have even known that these were even coming out. So hopefully you guys will find today's video helpful and informative in case you're wondering if this is something that you really wanna spend the money uh, for or not just because they can be a little bit pricey. This set is actually on loan to me from Riley So a big thank you to Riley for making this video possible today He wanted to give me a chance to build these up and share these with you guys uh, So that you could make an informed decision whether it's something that you may want to spend your money on or not But let's go ahead and get into it with the set here. Let's start off with the box All right, so with this being a set of four We'll go through each one and there will be time codes down below in case you guys want to skip around But here on this the outer box you can see it shows you which ones are included Heimdall Brigandier, Beltal, and Virge. I'm guessing that's the correct pronunciation. Sorry if that's not. Let's go ahead and open these up and we'll go in order. Number zero one will be the Veltal. Here's a look at the front of the box. You have just kind of a black and white image of the design right there, the Xeno Gears logo. Not really gonna have too much else to see here, except that you can see this is in 144 scale. But the back of the box here is gonna show a fully painted sample front rear or back side there, a pose, and then all of the contents. Now I'm guessing these are not gonna be necessarily all that poseable, just based on what I know from the front mission kits. But again, what these lack in color separation and articulation, they tend to make up for in detail, at least in my opinion. So you can see all of the parts and everything's kind of all bagged in a single bag. You take that out and then there's individual bags around the runners as we're used to. But the instructions are gonna be pretty simple here. There's not any more color photos or anything else in here. Just have the parts list and the construction right there on this, this simple folded piece of paper and that's pretty much it. So as for the runners here, we've got a clear runner, which is gonna be your base plate and a connection arm there for the base, quite nice. Then we got three small runners here in gray, which is just gonna basically be your joint parts for the kits. And I'm guessing these are probably gonna be universal amongst all of the kits. So this is runner A3 and A4. So we'll see if the other kits are the same. Runners A1 and A2 are all the rest of our parts here, which are all in a very light gray, sort of like an off-white color here for these. And you can see, taking a look up close there at some of the details there, like on the hand parts, for example, the face play is right here. Runner A2, we have two of, so this is gonna be parts like for the arms and legs. There's a look at those parts. And that's it for all the parts here for this guy. All right, here is the kit all built up. And there's a couple things to note. Obviously, it is gonna have some seam lines on the parts. And if you just take a look around, you'll notice, yeah, there's gonna be quite a lot of seams. Now, on like the front mission kits, which I've taken a look at before, the seams, it definitely, those kits definitely had seam lines as well. Although much less hidden just because the shapes are so like big and blocky. These kits are gonna have a lot more rounded and kind of more organic shapes where the seam lines are gonna be a lot more visible. So that's one thing. Also, just in terms of the overall stability of it, you'll notice these are kind of, there's some parts that are kind of very loose, other parts that are much more tight. And so the fit of everything is not great. That said, what is really nice about these kits, and I did experience this with the front mission kits as well, is that even though there are, you know, very simple kits and pretty small, as you can see, it's not really all that big. To compare it with a 144 scale Gundam kit, you can see it's even smaller than your average 144 scale Gundam. They are pretty nicely articulated and you've got a single joint there in the elbow, but it's giving you a little bit more than 90 degrees there the head is able to go really far up and down like that here in the torso section you have a ball joint between the top and bottom half of the torso and then the connection to the waist will turn on this particular kit yeah you'll see these side skirt bits want to pop off very easily just off these small little ball joints there the shoulder is also on a ball joint so you can move that around you can bring the arm up to about 90 degrees there like that. Back around here on the backpack, these parts can move around side to side, up and down on ball joints there. Also those parts here on the backpack, you can also adjust the angles of those as well. The legs rotate here at the top, come up to the front like that, and a double joint here at the knee with a separation of that knee armor. Now I'm going through all the artic articulation point by point on this model. It's gonna be the same for all of them essentially, and I will not go through it point by point for each kit, but I will show you guys some different action poses with each of them, and that will illustrate for you guys 
uh, just some of the articulation that you can see on them. But generally, it's going to be kind of the same between all the kits here. For the foot, you can see there's not a ball joint as well. And you got nice full detail up underneath. So even though there's a bit of fitting issues and seam lines and stuff like that, they are pretty nicely detailed. So you can see there's quite a lot of detail on there. So once you do have these all prepped, got rid of all the seam lines and everything and they're ready for paint they are going to look really nice once they are fully painted now for this one in terms of its accessories you basically just have different hand options so you have these closed fists that you have there on the kit at the moment you also have a set of these open expressive hands with the wrist kind of slightly bent back like that which again look really nice they're very nicely detailed and everything and you have those for the left and the right side you also have these with like the two fingers extended also again like with the bent wrists there like that for those options again for the left and the right and then a set of flat hands like this as well for doing all sorts of different kind of like uh, martial arts poses I guess they can do with this with those different hand parts so that's all pretty cool the other accessory that we're gonna have of course just being the base here so as you can see we have points of articulation here here and here where that will bend and then you can rotate that at where this is plugged into the base and it's gonna be kind of tight so just make sure you're being a little bit careful with that and the this will not connect up underneath the waist but actually into the center of the backpack so you kind of have to move these parts uh, apart like that and then you can see it's going to be connected right into the center of the lower back right there for being able to put this in different poses and things you don't have to worry about uh, having this stand up that said it should stand up on its own just fine although it does have a lot of stuff going on in the back there i was having it standing up earlier and it didn't have really have any issues. Just a close up look at the face there. And so yeah, like I said, a lot of really great detail on here. Once they're painted, they're definitely going to look pretty nice. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. Okay, so up next, let's take a look at Verge, which again, I'm guessing is hopefully the correct pronunciation of that. The size of the box, nothing really much there. The back of the box features the front and rear view, side view, and then a sort of action pose there, I guess, if you can call it that. The contents right down here at the bottom and with that let's go ahead and pop open the box so with this once again it's going to be very similar in that the instructions as we can see here are just going to be a single fold out piece of paper and it's going to be the same for all four of these just with the parts list and the construction right there there's all that all right so we got the same clear base runner here for this and then once again three small gray runners here for the joint parts which is going to be b3 and two of b4 so a little bit different but then once again all of the exterior armor pieces are all going to be in this off-white light gray color here's runner b1 and then B2, we have two of. So once again, just to show some of that detail, I mean, it's really nice and sharply uh, molded. All the detail on there does look really nice and crisp. Let's go ahead and take a look at the kit put together. Here is the kit all built up, looking sort of like a Xenogears version of the Nobel Gundam in a way, uh, with the hair. Obviously one difference in the articulation of this, like I said before, I'm not gonna go through all the points of articulation because they're generally the same uh, for each kit, but obviously we have these much larger side skirts here which are attached on basically via the same way just on a little ball joint up there but these seem to be pretty well attached so those aren't going to be falling off and a nice detail on the inside and the outside of those sections which is nice and then of course up here on the head aside from just our neck movement we also have the movement of the kind of hair part out the back there as well now it doesn't separate or anything it's just one piece essentially but you can see we just have a joint there that will allow that to move up and down and it doesn't really stay up that well so if you wanted this to be in a, like an action pose where this is up like that you will have to glue that or just add some glue or paint or something onto there to make that to stay up a little bit more firmly but otherwise around here on the back you can see there's where your action base is going to plug in for this right at the back of the hip section but again we have some nice articulation kind of all throughout and some nice details everywhere as well so like i said before once this is all painted up, you know, once you take the time and get rid of all the seam lines and everything around on this, and there are quite a few of those, including through so a little bit more tricky areas, certainly, but uh, once you get through all of the seams and everything, it is going to look really nice when it's all painted up. For our accessories for this one, we do have some different hand options. So you have the closed fists on there. We have some open hands, which are definitely a little bit different kind of in shape from the open expressive hands that we saw on the Veltal, kind of a different uh, pose for those. And then we have a set of holding hands for the left and the right side. And these are gonna be for holding onto our handheld accessories, weapons here that we have. And we've got two different ones here. Not exactly sure what these are or what they do, uh, just because, like I said, I'm unfamiliar with the source material, but 
there is one like that. So you'll have to take this apart in order to put this into the hand. You just take this off like that, slide this through your holding hand, and then pop the top of that back onto there like so. Our other one here is just this little kind of stick weapon like that. And so you do have a couple of handheld accessories here for this one. Got the same stand base included, so nothing different about that, except like I said, it's a little bit different in where it plugs onto the kit itself. Rather than onto the lower back, it plugs into the back of the hips there. And again, you're kind of gonna have to move the hair a little bit out of the way to be able to plug that onto there, but it shouldn't really be too much of an issue, and this one should look really nice uh, posed up. All right, guys, up next then, kit number three is Heimdall, which I'm only guessing is the correct pronunciation for that because that's how it's pronounced in the Marvel movies, I guess. But there is the box art on the front, and on the back, you'll notice, once again, the front, rear, and side images of the kit, and then the action pose here in the center. And I'm just now kind of realizing this after noticing that on the previous two kits, looking at the box right here in the back, the colors are different here between these photos and the photo in the center. And it looks to be that the reason for that is that the image that you see there at the center is an actual painted build of the kit, whereas the other images there are the CG renders. So that's why the color is slightly different. But on the inside, you guys should have a good idea what we can expect here for this one. Let's go ahead and just check out these runners here real quick. Once again, here is the parts list and construction on the instruction paper. And once again, we've got that same clear base piece right here. Our three little gray runners for the connection pieces, the joint pieces here in this case, C3 and then two of C4. So if you notice the first kit was all A, the second kit was all B, this kit is all C. As you can see here on runner C1 and then our two of C2 here, once again, is all molded here in off-white, but there's that sword part right there, which looks very cool. And then some of the details here, especially like under the feet, quite detailed there as well for some of these parts. All right, so here's this one all built up and I don't know what it is about the design. Maybe you guys see it as well, but it really reminds me a lot of the Leo for some reason. And I think it's just to do with kind of like the shape of the legs and the knees, especially the lower leg down here. Uh, it's just kind of got a lot of shapes and design features that are kind of very reminiscent of the Leo. The fact that it doesn't really have like skirt armor, it's just kind of this one simple skirt section there. Anyway, similarities to the Leo design aside, you have this part here on the back, sort of a backpack. And so without any where to actually plug an action base connector onto this for the base connection you have this additional piece like that which you'll use and the backpack actually is just going to rest in there and that's how you, this kit is going to be held onto the action base which is kind of interesting because there's no like specific angle this is locked into I feel like if you wanted to have this in a pose where it was kind of like flying diagonally like that it's not really going to be able to hold it that well although well, maybe it is I don't know yeah, not really. See, it's gonna be just kind of weighed down like that. So if you did want to have this on the base and at some sort of angle like that, I think you're probably gonna have to just drill a hole here into the back or something like that and then just use the connection piece. Because you do have just the regular connection piece in here if you wanted to use that, which of course you can't as it is, you would have to drill a hole. But for our other accessories, once again, we've got closed fists. There for those hands, we've also got a set of hands that are just flat like that. And it is cool that the hands are different for all of them, so they didn't just make like one generic set of hands, they did keep the designs as close to the original designs as, as they could, I guess they kept the original designs. Here's our weapon holding hands, we've got these for the left and the right side as well. Although we only have one weapon that it can hold, so you're only ever going to need one of those at a time. Here is its sword weapon, which is about 10 centimeters in length. It's just a one single piece there, pretty simple, but again, nicely detailed here. You have some detail at the handle and the blade is actually nice and looks quite sharp and everything. Overall, a cool design for this one. This is probably my favorite of the set. The articulation, again, is all gonna be pretty standard here for this, some nice movement uh, all throughout the body. Again, just for the simplicity of these kits, the articulation is overall pretty good, I feel like. This one does also feel a bit more solid in that you don't really feel like any of the joints are too loose or any parts are gonna pop off. Probably the most likely would be these side skirts just because again, they're just held on via this tiny little ball joint there. But other than that, everything feels pretty good on these. Again, up underneath the feet, you got full detail there and everything. So once 
all, you get rid of all the seam lines and everything. I feel like I'm saying this for all of them, but you know, it's just, just the case with them. Once you get rid of the seams and get them all painted up, they are going to look really nice. Then that leaves us guys here with the last in this set, the Brigandier, and he has a very interesting head ornament right there on the head. Let's go ahead and take a quick look around here on the box. On the back side, we can see the full color image there of the painted sample build in the center in a kind of action sort of pose right there. And then some other images here of the front, back and side. Let's go ahead and check out the contents here. Again, you should have a pretty good idea what to expect, even though this is supposed to be all red. It's still, once again, unfortunately gonna be molded in all white for the exterior color. But here is the instruction manual front and back. And as for the runners, as you guys may have guessed, we have our clear base piece, runner D3 and a two of runner D4 for our joint pieces here in gray. And then runner D1 and a D2 is gonna be all in that off-white for some very nicely detailed armor pieces there for the kit. Let's go ahead and check it out. All right, so here this guy is, and it's gonna be even more chunky and even more solid feeling than the Heimdall with this one, although it is kind of similar in its overall design. And we have basically the same backpack here for this, which means that for our base, it's gonna be using the same backpack connection piece to hold this up. Oops, and how could I forget? Of course, it's plumage, the feather, which is attached there onto the top of the head. Almost forgot about that, which you actually have two different ones here. You have that one, and then you have this one, which is a longer one. I'm not sure if there's any particular difference or reason for one over the other but you have two different options there for the feather on the top of the head that kind of design feature for the hand options we once again have a set of closed fists and then we have a set of open expressive hands like that no holding hands with this one just these two sets of hands as our sort of weapon options are these kind of like uh, heat whip kind of looking things very similar to like what the goof uses and we have four of them two short and two long ones and otherwise there's not really too much uh, discernibly different about them. You can just see just the length of them gonna be slightly different. These can be plugged into the forearm right there. So again, very similar to the goof, they just shoot out of the forearm and so you can use either the closed fist or I think the open expressive hands would look pretty good for that. But again, a lot of really great detail here on this, aside from just the feather on the head, like here in the shoulders and around on the arms, down here on the legs, these big vents look really cool there on the leg there. It's got these big uh, chunky flat feet with some really cool detail up underneath the feet there as well. So a lot of really interesting, nice detail here for this one. And like I said, it does feel quite solid. This one again has, even though it doesn't really have like any particular knee armor, still have a double joint there at the knee, the elbows, all the articulation still gonna be pretty standard here. The elbow joint not gonna bend quite as far just because of this added bulk there on the forearm just for that weapon. But otherwise, the same range of articulation here essentially for that, up and down on the sides, the head will go nicely up and down as well. So there we go. So right, guys, we'll try out a few different poses here with these. And I mean, be just because they don't come with necessarily a ton of accessories or anything like that, you're gonna be slightly limited just in the posing options that you have for them. And even though, like I've been saying, the articulation is pretty good, of course, there are still, you know, pretty simple kits at the end of the day. These are not gonna be the kind of kits that I would recommend for everyone. They're a little bit expensive, to say the least, and they also, you know, like I said, require quite a bit of work to get them really looking their best. So these are really only gonna be for those of you out there who are particularly big fans of Xeno Gears and are willing to invest the time and money into making these model kits look the best that they can because unfortunately there's just not any other option out there. So if you are a big Xeno Gears fan and you want some model kits that you can make of some different mecha from the game, yeah, you just kind of don't really have any other better option. So these are really nice. They're gonna take a lot of work to get them to look their best but I would say a worthy investment if you're willing to do that. But let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comment section below. What do you think about this set? I do have another set of the front mission kits that I do need to take a look at. So I'll look at those in the near future here with you guys. If you haven't seen my review of the previous set, you can go back and check that out. They're overall very similar just in terms of like the articulation and the part separation. Those actually do have a bit more in the way of accessories with them. And they also are, like I mentioned before, they hide the seam lines a lot better just because of the nature of the designs of them. But those are also unfortunately pretty expensive just compared to like what you would get from a typical Bandai model kit, which is not exactly a very fair comparison to make just because Bandai is a company that is able to make such high quality 
quality products and sell them for such a low price, it kind of makes it very difficult to compare them to any other model kit producer. But Square Enix is pretty notorious in how expensive their model kits are, unfortunately. But like I said, you just don't really have a whole lot of options available. Anyway, that's it for today's video, guys. If you would also want to check out some more mecha models and paints and tools and supplies and all that good stuff, you can check the link in the video description to USA Gundam Store down below. Thank you guys so much for all of your support, liking the video, commenting, and subscribing. I really appreciate it. Until next time, hope you all have a great day. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.